Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Atlanta Braves Baseball. Along with Skip Carey, this is Ernie Johnson speaking to you from St. Louis, where tonight is game two of a three-game set with the Cardinals. It was all St. Louis last night, 14-0. A reminder, we've got an afternoon game tomorrow. Thursday's off. We're home against Pittsburgh over the weekend. But first things first. Do you have some pitchers for us, young man? Yes, I do. Two of them, one for each team. Danny Cox for the Cardinals and Len Barker for the Braves. And we'll be back with the starting lineup right after this bet. Cardinals have taken their positions. Now everyone is asked to rise from St. Louis, our national anthem. Night. Hopefully there'll be no rain here tonight. Skip's got the starting lineup. Okay, Ernie, for Atlanta, Claudel Washington leads it off in right field. Rafael Ramirez will play shortstop and bat second. Gerald Perry at first base hits third. Dale Murphy in center field bats cleanup. Third baseman Bob Horner hits fifth. Terry Harper in left field batting sixth. Glenn Hubbard will play second, bat seventh. Bruce Benedict does the catching. He hits eighth. Len Barker is the pitcher. He is one and three, a 3.75 earned run Everett. For the Cardinals, Vince Coleman leads it off in left field. Ozzie Smith, their shortstop, bats second. Willie McGee, the center fielder, hits third. Jack Clark, the first baseman, bats cleanup. Andy Van Slyke will play right field and bat fifth. Terry Pendleton at third base, bats sixth. Terry Lawless at second, bats seventh. Tom Nieto, the catcher, hits eighth. And Cox, the pitcher, he's three and one for the year, a 3.06 earned run average. The only negative statistic on him, six home run balls have been thrown in 47 innings. There was one game played today in the major leagues, and the Chicago Cubs beat the... The Cincinnati Reds, rather, beat the Chicago Cubs 5-2. Tony Perez had a home run in that ball game. All the other action is tonight. Cox completes his warm-up tosses. He is was born in England, but then he grew up in the Warner Robins area. Graduated from Warner Robins High School in 1977. Played varsity baseball, football, and basketball. Then he went to Chattahoochee Valley Alabama Junior College and Troy State University. He was called up to pitch in the... Hall of Fame game by the Cardinals back in 83 and never got back to the minor leagues until he was there for a little tuning up last year and now he's in the Cardinal rotation and doing very, very well. He completes his warm-up tosses. Nieto's throw goes to second. Paul Kasky and Jeff Lindsay all the way from Hobbs, New Mexico to St. Louis to root for the Braves tonight. And we hope they enjoy it more than any of us enjoyed last night's mess. Quite Al Washington will lead it off. Uh, leading off the play-by-play, -play, here's Ernie Johnson. Thank you, Skip. You can see the ratio. Bases on balls to strikeouts. That's excellent for Danny Cox. Quite Al Washington leads it off. Tommy Herr is not playing. Tom Lawless is at second base. I believe Herr's got a hamstring problem. Well, he pulled it a little bit, sort of like Bob Horner's situation. He pulled it in Houston on Sunday, and they just want to give him a little rest so he doesn't miss three or four weeks. Ready to go. Game two, and here's the first pitch. Look out. One and oh. Danny Cox 
Had no luck against Atlanta last year, went 0-3. The 1-0. Inside corner, one ball, one strike. He can throw hard. Just like that, Laura puts the, the graphic up. They play Washington straight away, and that is lined, hit, right field. Over quickly is Van Slyke. Just over the glove of Tom Lawless, and Washington gets his first hit in the series. He went 0 for 4 last night. Now, Rafael Ramirez, he also went 0 for 4 in last night's game. There weren't many hits. Andohar limited the Braves to six hits in the shutout. Four fourteen to dead center, three eighty three in the alleys and three thirty right down the lines. Just a beautiful stadium. Washington, who likes to run, is at first base. We've got some rain in New York where the Padres are playing. That game has not started yet. Cincinnati is playing great baseball. They have the best road record in the National League. Fouled away. And if San Diego loses tonight, Cincinnati would be one game out of first. One ball, one strike. Washington, as you can see, perfect and steals. Nieto caught that ball on the end of the thumb, I guess. He got that foul tip somewhere on the meat hand. He's trying to grip the ball and shake it off. It's funny how it's a cause and effect thing. Washington bluffed the start from first base. That got Nieto saw him out of the corner of his eye and had the bare hand, which is normally protected, out because he thought he was going to have to make the throw to second, and that's what got him hurt. Now he plays a little soft toss with Ozzie Smith, says, I'm okay. With nobody on base, most of your catchers just put the meat hand right behind their back. Mm -hmm. You will occasionally, in fact, see a pass ball because they do that so much it becomes a habit and they'll do it without thinking with a runner on base. Here's a 1-1. He's going, pitch out, throw. He's out of there. I would say he's deep us. Didn't he and he called the pitch out. Perfect. Not stealing. He went through that charade and then pitched out, and the Braves fell right into his trap. Two on. Loop toward right. That kind of night. Pop fly single by a Rafael Ramirez following the cut ceiling. Now Daryl Perry. Here's Daryl Perry. Perry won for three last night with a single. He's getting every opportunity by Eddie Haas to nail down first. But there's been very little run production from that position, and there's supposed to be a lot coming out of first base. It's an RBI position. That is lined toward right, but it's going to be caught by Van Slyke. His throw is over everybody but Nieto, and he was doing his job. He was backing up the throw, and he caught it as Van Slyke threw over first. Two down. Murphy had two hits last night. Bobby Dews is coaching first base and Bobby Wine at third. League leading home runs and RBIs for Dale Murphy. Just outside said Lee Wire. A 
We'll be with you tomorrow afternoon at 1.35 Eastern. A businessman special. Breaking ball. One ball, one strike. third. One ball, two strikes. Cubs in losing today are now two back of New York. Next play San Diego tonight in New York. Score top of the first St. Louis coming to bat. There you see how the Braves line up in the field behind Len Barker. He's got a couple of more warm-up tosses. Well, they're bunched together pretty much, don't you think? <laughs> a lot of balls be hit over their heads if they line up like that. Playing shallow. Vince Coleman will lead it off. Two for five last night with a couple of stolen bases. He has 28 stolen bases on the year. Been caught six times. And he has stolen third ten times now. He is shooting for Juan Samuel's all-time record for a rookie. Samuel last year stole 72 bases for the Phillies. You know, he was a football player in college, a punter, and had a tryout with the Washington Redskins as a punter. How'd you like to try to catch him in the open field? Well, that's what they did. They had him run those 40 yards. They said, you're not a punter anymore. You're a wide receiver. He said, I think I'll try baseball. Well, the whole secret, of course, is to keep him from getting the first. Horner shallow at third, and Perry up at first. We haven't seen him bunt that much. He tries to hit down on the ball, hit some grounders, and line drives, and run. He got an infield hit last night, and on the replay, it looked like he was up in the air running toward first before the bat hit the ball. And he hit it to deep short, and Ramirez didn't have a chance. By the way, he played his college ball at Florida A&M, baseball and football. He's at 284, the pitch to him. A little bit high. One and all. pitches tomorrow. He goes for his ninth against Kurt Kepshire. Smith is on deck. 2-0 from Barker. A little high, I guess. 3-0. We'll be home tomorrow in time to watch the 76ers and Celtics get together on TBS at 8.05. A must win for 76ers. If they're they down 3-1. to one. If they don't, they're out on the links working on the three-wood effective Thursday. Well, he is at first base. The roadrunner. And now you've got a mess. This guy can fly. Barker has that ponderous motion, and you know... Or if you're an amateur psychiatrist at all, and I think all of us are, you know the last thought that Len Barker had before he started to pitch to Coleman was, now make this guy hit his way on, and just the opposite is what occurred. Smith last night, one for two. He squeezed in a run. Ozzie has seven RBIs in his last nine games. example of what speed does to you. Benedict's jumping out of the chute, Barker's ducking, yeah. and nobody's thinking about throwing a strike. The 
third member of their relay team is on deck. That's Willie McGee. Why doesn't Gerald just step on his foot? Trip. Think anybody notice? Yes. You could have a long leg to step out there. Not going. Two and all. You can see Barker more concerned, I believe, with the runner at first than the batter. Talking to Jack Buck about that last night, about what Coleman does to the opposition. And he made a pretty good point. He said, if he wants to steal it, normally he's going to steal it anyway. So if I were them, I'd forget about him and just worry about the hitter. Two balls and no strike. That's the strike, two and one. Great pitch to steal or hit and run on, and Smith looks at Hal Lanier at third. Nick Leva is at first coaching for St. Louis. 2-1, time called as Parker steps off. Renner, the ump at first base says safe. There you go. Bouncing ball toward right field. Hit run. Hubbard went over toward second. It's bounced right through the hole. First and third. This is where we came in, isn't it? Last night. Now watch Gerald Perry here. He starts to make a break for the ball. Well, we can't see him, but he started to make a break for the ball. He didn't know, apparently, who was covering at second. I think if he goes on through, he could make the play, but he did not. Now Willie McGee, first and third and nobody out. Now you have to watch Smith. And the pitch is inside. There's no two ways about it. This St. Louis club can rattle a pitcher. Down low. Two and all. He shortened a bunt twice as if he was going to bunt Smith over. I think he's kidding, don't you? Yeah. Early in the game, I don't think he'd waste a bunt. There's Coleman at third, and Ozzy Smith is at first. Runner going. Stolen base. The throw is off target, but he had a big jump. for the races. A perfect throw, I don't think, gets it. Nobody out, runner second and third. McGee, a switch hitter. Three balls and a strike. He's been behind every hitter. Down scored first. Perry with one play, a run score. And McGee last night, deja vu, got a run in on a ground out for the first run of the ball game. Over to third goes Smith. In to score Coleman. Here's Jack Clark. Clark two for three last night. He's at a home run in every ballpark he's played in this this year. Just a big strong hitter. The infield about halfway. That gets away, a foul tip for a moment. Jack Clark is saying it didn't hit his bat. 
He may be right because Benedict whipped the mask off and started after the ball and Barker broke from the mound to cover the plate. Let's look again Ernie and see what's what. I don't know. Right off the end it might have might have just kicked it. He homered here last night. We've got no runs on two hits. They've got two runs on one hit. That doesn't seem right, does it? We're in the bottom of the first. A little bit high. One and all. Van Slyke is hitting eight of his last nine games. He's got it. Woo. That's it for the Cardinals. We go to the second inning down by two. Bob Horner leads off the second inning. Pittsburgh two, Houston one in the fifth. San Francisco got three in the first. It started a rain. Philadelphia has not batted yet. Giants with three, top of the first. A final, we gave you Cincinnati five, Chicago two. Dodgers in Montreal, Expos three, Dodgers nothing. They're in the fourth at Montreal. And reigning in New York, they have not started that game between the Padres and the New York Mets. Here comes Horner. 0 for 3 last night. Manager of the Braves, Bobby Cox, who's 44 years old today. And happy birthday to the Toronto skipper. Harper's on deck. Third ball in there. Doug Sisk was called back from the minor leagues by the New York Mets. He was one of the best relief pitchers in the league last year. They demoted him. He's now back with New York foul out of play and Rick Russell who picked so many years from the for the Chicago Cubs has been recalled from the minor leagues by the Pittsburgh Pirates. In fact he was going to pitch tonight. That's bounced right off his foot. Oh and two. Interviewed Whitey Herzog on the leadoff man at their radio pregame show, and he he felt the Braves would be in it all year long. He said they gotta not have those hitting slumps, but he felt that they were a contender, and he's seen all the clubs but Cincinnati in the West. Well hit the left. Back toward that wall, there's no doubt about it. This ball is out of here, Bob Horner. Bob Horner got it all. To make it two to one. Boy, is that a relief to see him jump on one like that. We mentioned last night, Pete and I are talking, that it was time to start worrying about his power production a little bit. Well, that'll ease the worry. On an 0-2 pitch. Not Terry Harper. Homer went in the first level. Oh, he got well over the fence in left field. 
comparable to the blue seats in Atlanta in left field. I always thought Horner was a late starter, even when he was 100% health-wise. He seemed like he hit the ball better June, July, and August than he did in April and May. The 1-1 one -one is outside. 2-1. Whitey Herzog's an interesting guy to talk to. He's got a lot of theories. 2-1. Two, 2 and 2. He said on the designated hitter, let's have it or let's not have it. There's Whitey. And he had a suggestion that I thought made some sense. 2-2. Two, two. Strike out of Harper on a curveball. We were talking away from the recorder and and Whitey said if they want to go to expansion and have the DH, he feels that teams could get along with only 23 players on the team with a DH. You don't need that many players. He said that would release 54, 52 ball players in the major leagues and uh, make them eligible for expansion teams. But he would rather have the DH or not have it. This practice they have now, he says, isn't right. But you can't take it out of the American League. He said, how can you take it out? Because a lot of contracts are written based on the DH for some of those players. Well, you have to eat contracts for other reasons. Yeah. Inside, Hubbard takes it. I think everyone agrees he should have it or just scrub it. Glenn Hubbard has worked it to 3-0. deck is Benedict. A little bit high. Hubbard's at first with a walk. Benedict didn't play last night. He's batting 167. night and hopefully there'll be no rain. Barker's on deck. Way outside. Danny Cox being a little wild here. Benedict looks at Bobby Wine. They use Benedict to hit and run. He handles the bat well. Joseph, a happy first birthday, and also wants to say hi to Tony and Chris. They're looking in today. Terry Pendleton leaves it off. He'll be followed by Tom Lawless and Tom Nieto. I think both these ball clubs can be contenders. They need a little help in pitching. Cardinals, possibly more in the bullpen. The Braves, more starting pitching and middle relief. You never have too much pitching. If you think so, try to make a trade for one. One out. Two and out. Barker's been wild early.
Cardinals have stolen 79 bases. They've been successful 77% of the time. That's almost unheard of. Hi. They've tried 103 times. Successful 79. Three balls and no strike. Lawless is on deck. Two to one, St. Louis. Strike call. Nice bounce. One down. The batter, Tom Lawless. Came on late last night, went one for three, and also got into the act. He stole a base. Hey, Ernie, your close personal friend, Fred Bird, has made his first appearance of the night. The winner of the Mark Goldsmith lookalike contest. I thought he had joined uh, Mr. Red and... The great mascot heaven. No, nope. Fred Bird is still <laughs> holding forth there. Got a good set of wheels, hasn't he? Bird legs. I wonder if he ever goes to dinner with UP and if he does what they talk about. The three or four of them should go to dinner together. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> the what all? High pop right side, Gerald Perry should catch it. Lawless fouls to first. Now Tom Nieto. One for five last night. Benedict talks it over with Barker. They want to get this guy. They want the pitcher to lead off next inning. Rose just keeps on keeping on. He now has scored 2,107 runs with that homer yesterday, and he tied Hank Aaron for the National League record. High fly center, Murphy, with no problem. And Barker gets to face the pitcher as a leadoff batter in the third. We go to the third, 2-1 to one, St. Louis. to the third. White Sox three, Toronto two, sixth inning, Boston one, Minnesota batting bottom of the first. Milwaukee four, three on Cleveland in the fifth. Kansas City leads Texas two nothing in the second. The only scores we have for you in the American at this time. Congratulations to Dan McGill and the University of Georgia tennis team. They won the NCAA title today. Beat UCLA five matches to one in Athens, Georgia. Dan McGill probably is Good as they come in that business. What a program he's had there for years. This is Barker. Strike called on a fastball. I'm sure he's loving every minute of it. <laughs> Don't ruin it now. Don't ruin it. Toward short. Smith throws him out. One down. Pittsburgh is in over the weekend, and Saturday night is Purina High Pro Picnic Cooler Night. Yes, sir, it's all of those. First 25,000 adults enter the stadium with a reserve seat ticket, receive a what they cooler receive? bag, a vinyl insulated cooler bag. Provide your own contents. <laughs> Here's Claudel. Single was caught stealing first time. Little breeze coming in. There's a bouncer foul past Bobby Dews. Skip Karen Ernie Johnson with you. Bush Stadium, St. Louis. Oh, and two. We mentioned Miguel Sosa hitting his seventh home run yesterday. He plays for Richmond. We found out today that he had one game this year where he hit three homers. Three taters in one game. I believe it was in Pawtucket. 
Sosa's an infielder, and he's a good one. One ball, two strikes. That's a strikeout on a fastball. Number three for Danny Coe. Rafael Ramirez had a bloop single first time up. Hit it the short right. Big meeting Thursday of player reps in Chicago. There, Don Fear, who represents the union, is going to ask for a strike vote, and he'll probably get it. He just wants authorization to call a strike if they just never get together this year. And right now they're heading in that direction, never getting together. There's so many issues that it's hard to understand. The 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One the latest is the owners propose a cap on salaries for each ball club. In other words, total number of dollars. You can't go over that for a year's salary for your team. The He's NBA, got about as much chance of passing as... <laughs> the NBA has that now, and so far it has worked, but it is in litigation. Some players have challenged it, saying it's illegal. 2-2. Two -two. Toward third. Uh-oh, look at that. Look what I found. A nice play by Terry Pendleton. on this carpet. We go to the bottom of the third. It's still a one-run lead for St. Louis. Tomorrow night, America's Super Shootout continues when the Philadelphia 76ers take on the Boston Celtics. That's at 8.05 Eastern, right here on the Superstation. to the bottom of the third inning. It's a two-to-one game, St. Louis. Danny Cox, a pitcher, will lead it off, and here's Skip. Okay, Ernie, thank you. Cox hitting 111 for the year with an RBI and a double. 2-1 our score. Cox, 25 years old. Parker had a shaky first to one, two, three, second. See how he fares in the third. One ball, no strikes. Another fine crowd here in St. Louis. They must have 30,000 or more in the ballpark. I don't know how many are paid. It's one and one. Some of the assembled masses here in St. Louis. They've averaged 26,000 a game. They're at 446 coming in. Breaking ball nubbed off his fist, fouled on the first baseline. A ball and two strikes on the Cardinal pitcher. Dodgers losing to Montreal 3 1 in the sixth inning of their game. Pirates lead Houston 3-1 on the seventh. The one-two. Fouled it away. It's still a ball and two strikes. On Danny Cox. And there's the speedster Vince Coleman waiting on deck. Missed the outside corner. Two and two. Hit that pretty well, though. Way fouled on the right side. Stays two balls, two strikes. It's in town Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, then the Cardinals follow. 
And then we head for Pittsburgh and Chicago. Cox giving him a battle up there. Still two balls, two strikes. Montreal is now leading the Dodgers 5-1. comes the 2-2. Two -two. Got him with a let up. Cox becomes Barker's first strikeout victim. And here's Coleman who walked and scored his first time. I want to thank the Sporting News for a, a nice luncheon today. They had the British traveling party out to the stadium club today. Much appreciated. Good conversation and good food. on the year. No homers. Eight runs driven home. Boy, what a future this kid has. He hit that ball pretty well. Washington in deep right field. Is the ballpark big enough? He might. He's going to get it inside the Parker maybe. They're going to there's his first home run in the major league and he joined there headed out of the ballpark looks like he hit it with one hand and he did it was a breaking ball and he hit it high into the air Washington got his glove on it, I believe. Right there. I thought he tipped it with his glove. And then the race was on. That's Lanier waving him in. And he scores standing. They asked for a curtain call from Vince Coleman. Smith. Looked like Clondell sort of ran by that ball, didn't it? And I thought he touched it. He, he did go by it, but I thought in his leap that he might have touched it, deflected it. Look out, folks. I didn't really think the ball would carry that far, the way he swung at it. The wind is blowing toward right field, though, in a circular stadium. You wonder if that makes a whole lot of difference. foul territory. So the Cardinals lead it 3-1, though they've been out hit 3-2. Sharply hit, but right at the hub. Two down for Willie McGee, who drove in a run with an infield out his first time. McGee now with 14 RBIs, six of them in this series. Missed inside. One ball, no strikes. Pretty productive time of it for Cardinal center fielder. And a weak swing at that ball on the count evens, one and one. Here on deck hitter is Jack Clark. To Willie McGee. His home run last. 
last night went deep into the seats and straight away center field. He really ripped it. Two strikes. Curve. Saw the two. Never throw him up. It's a different game when you play on this stuff. And you run the 100 in about nine flat. Curve ball hit into the ground and just forget about it. Well, now Bruce Benedict will get the arm limbered up. You got another speedster at first. There are two out. Clark sacrifice fly to deep center field his first time. Just missed getting it out of here. He's going. Throw is into center field. McGee is at third. It'll be a stolen base and an error on Benedict. Throw wasn't that bad, just a little short, and it got by Hubby. Here we see it with McGee going to one hopper that gets through. Charge Benedict with an error, put McGee at third with two down. up inside but got the pitch too far in two balls no strikes still raining in New York where the Padres are trying to play he missed the double by a foot or so and a strike. Just got him and the inning is over. Clark got down the line in great shape. A run scores the inside the park homer for Vince Coleman. One of two hits in the inning and you'll see it again. We go out. There were no errors and a runner left. for Atlanta. Braves down by two now, 3-1. The heart of the order for the Braves, Gerald Perry, Dale Murphy, Bob Horner. It was Horner's homer that has Atlanta on the board in the game. Gerald lined hard to the right fielder, Andy Van Slyke, his first time. Gerald at 2.05. And the 1-0. Let up, squib to short. Ozzie Smith waits, fields, throws him up. Dale Murphy was a strikeout victim his first time. the 0-2 homer by Horner. Jackson's been tough. The ball has not left the infield against him since that time.
He is poetry in motion. This ball is sharply hit. Makes no difference. The odds. He ought to be good. He gets twelve thousand three hundred forty-seven dollars and thirty-three cents per game, according to the St. Louis newspaper. It's almost as much as you get. Oh, I wish. Yes. One ball, no strikes. Didn't they compare it to the athletic director of one of the colleges or something? Yeah, Jim Dix, the guy quit at the University of Missouri at St. Louis as baseball coach. Made $18,700 a year for a 12-month-a-year job. And so Ozzy Smith makes that in 15 innings. We're not knocking Ozzy. You take what they'll give you. Yeah. We'd all do the same thing. We were playing. Two and one to Bob Horner. Terry Harper is on deck. It's 3-1 San Luis. Sharply hit. Pendleton comes up. A very easy, very quick inning for Danny Carter. Go to the bottom of the fourth. The Cardinals on top by two. the broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta Braves really? as it intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Hmm. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves and the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited, and you did not need the permission for last night's game. No, you can do whatever you want with that. In fact, I have several suggestions about it. But let's get back to the game, and Andy Van Slyke wouldn't have done so hot tonight either. It's 3-1 no. St. Louis. I don't think Washington touched that ball. I checked with Pete and John, and it was a good effort on his part, but it, it appeared to be up over his glove. John brought out a pretty good point talking with him on radio. Have you ever seen an inside the park home run where the batter didn't even have to slide? Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> a silly question. I did one of two outfielders collided one time. And they're laying there and the guys are trotting around the bases. And the 1-0. Inside, two balls, no strikes. Sliding would just slow him up. Yeah. Three and zero. Now people keep talking about the Braves pitching, and naturally it could be better. Everyone's trying to improve their pitching, but I still say I worry about this club's ability to score runs on four straight. Van Slyke is up. Well, I believe we all do. I, well, we feel that that is coming, but uh, I think the bullpen's okay, but. We need some better starting performances, and uh, sometimes they show signs of that. And I think the Cardinals would love to have somebody like Suter in their bullpen. It's shown that their bullpen is not uh, producing that much, and they could use another starter, too. So pitching so important because it's not like you can fake your way through this game. You play too many games. You're not, not playing every Sunday afternoon. It's 162. Van Slyke is 8 out of 10 in stolen bases. That'll fall. We're in a mess. Two on, nobody out in the fourth. Glenn doesn't seem to me to be popping that good fastball tonight. No, they've gotten around on it. Uh, one indication was when he threw a good fastball to Clark, and it was inside a little bit, and Clark got the barrel of that bat out in front and pulled it foul. Because as a pitcher, you know, if you think you got a pretty good fastball, and all of a sudden your best shot is pull foul past third, it gets you to think a little bit. Yeah. I don't think he's got his good fastball tonight. Lawless pops the first his first time. Willie Bunt 
He showed no signs of it. One ball, no strikes. The lower end, Lawless Nieto and the pitcher here in the Cardinal fourth. Van Slyke leads from second, Pendleton from first. Popped him up. Infield fly rule is in effect. Hubbard has it. One dot. There's a big out. Here's the Cardinal catcher. After two periods in the Stanley Cup playoff, Philadelphia leads Edmonton one nothing. Interestingly enough, Philadelphia has won or tied seven of the last eight hockey matches between those two teams. Boy, you shut out Edmonton, you're doing something. Nieto flied to center his first time. Strike on the corner. Nothing in one. They're still not underway in New York where the Padres are trying to play. The Giants lead the Phillies 3-0 on the bottom of the fourth. Cincinnati beat the Cubbies 5-2. A runner heads for third. Fly ball down the right side. That's trouble maybe. It is. One run will score. Nieto will stay at first. And runners are on the corner. is perfect. Hit and run and he hits it fair by about six feet down the right field foul line. A run in, first and third, one out, and here's a pitch. Gene Garber begins to work in the bullpen. Now they can squeeze, they can just bunt the runner to second, or they can let Cox hack away. He struck out his first time. Claudel maybe tries to make the catch on that ball on a sad field, but Afraid it would bounce over his head here. If he catches it, it's a double play. Poor Van Slyke was already around third. He might bunt now. They, they usually don't like a pitcher to hit because he inclined to hit into a double play. We'll see if he gets a bunt up. Vince Coleman waits on deck. has been our arch enemy tonight with a walk a run scored and inside the park homer. You get an arch enemy, the arch yeah. Enemy. Wasn't that used last night? Mm-hmm. Okay. I wasn't working with you. How did you know? <laughs> Your gems get around, kid. <laughs> Two and one. Lanier's dad was quite a pitcher. You must have seen him pitch Max for the old Lanier. Cardinals. Sure did. Yeah. Right through there. Two balls, two strikes. Max was one of those who jumped to the Mexican League for a time and then came back. Safe to say at that time there were not any huge salaries being paid. No. The owners, however, have suggested that the minimum salary be boosted from 40000 to 60000 with their new proposal. It was a time then, of course, everyone knew about the minimum salary of $5,000 in the early 50s. It was a time there was no minimum salary in the major leagues, and there were players playing in the West Coast in the AAA league out there that refused to go to the major leagues because they'd have to take a cut in salary. Some were making four, five, six hundred dollars a month in the major league. Two balls, two strikes. The squeeze is off. He's out at the plate. Good play by Benedict. He didn't panic at all. If Cox gets the ball out in front of the plate at all, he's got to run home, but he did not. Good play by Bruce Benedict. Now this comes with two strikes. If he fouls it, he's out, and the runner goes back. Benedict took it right there, and he's not afraid to get in there. He made the runner go around, and it's a big out. 
Here's Coleman. Runners first and second. Two out. Four, five, and oh for the Redbirds. One, three, and one for the Braves. Smith, our director tonight, and our producer, I guess. We don't have a producer, do we? Things always go so smoothly when there's not a producer. Have you I thought, Steph I thought Stephanie Bradley was producing. You know, she's our audio person. Yes, but I thought she was going to do both. It is a rather smooth telecast. So far, yeah. Nieto at second, Cox at first. Two out. Rafi to second for the force play, and the inning is over, but the Cardinals pick up an insurance run, and they do it on two hits. No errors were charged, two runners were left. At the end of four, it's St. Louis four, Atlanta one. gave the umpires at the start of this game. I think I forgot, in case I did. Lee Wire at first, Dutch Renner, rather, behind the plate, Dutch Renner at first, Ed Montague at second, and Fred Brocklander is umpiring at third. There's Big Lee, who is not Big only Lee. a fine umpire, but an outstanding amateur magician. And he does well, too. Yes, he wins the good housekeeping seat. Mm -hmm. And you know why they always turn their back to the pitcher when they dust off home plate? No, any why? Once years ago, an umpire had split his pants and he was pointing the other way when he dusted off home plate. So they made him change. Oh, I know that was an outstanding little bit of information for you. Folks, we'll do a little radio broadcast now so you can run and jot mm -hmm. that down. Mm -hmm. Cox, meanwhile, after a shaky start, is pitching very well. Harper, a strikeout victim, his first time. Popped him up. That's playable. Nieto and Pendleton. It'll be Pendleton. One out. Glenn Hubbard will bat. His first time. You having a good time? I'm not having a good time. Not too hot in St. Louis. No pun intended. Still plenty of time in this game, however. Not like last night. The 1-0 to the hub. Benedict waits on deck. Crowd is just sort of sitting back, cooling it now. Their Cardinals have a comfortable lead. Three and zero to Hubbard. Cox takes a little walk around the mound. Some of the fans of the future looking on. At the letters, inside edge, three and one. Is going to start throwing. If we get down to the pitcher, he'll be lifted. Lawless waits. 
Since Horner is homer in the second, the Braves have not had the ball out of the infield. Hit the ball hard his first time, but into a 4 6 3 double play. Barker has moved out on deck. Breaking ball at the knees. Cox, very impressive now. Your nose while shaving? My ear, but not my nose. <laughs> I managed that this morning. Can you believe that? What did you do last night? I think that might have been. <laughs> <laughs> Having family come to Atlanta for three and then coming here where there's family for three is really more than the human body should have to endure. Yeah, that and Bob Gibson. Or... Yeah. <laughs> to Benedict. If he gets on, it will be interesting. Garber has taken a seat now. In the morning, when you look in the mirror, you shave the face that's looking directly back at you. I see. One in the middle of the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Benedict is aboard with two out. Barker is going to hit for himself. Glenn bounced to short his first time. That interrupts a string of 10 straight set down by Danny Cox. Downstairs to Barker, 1-0. Cordell Washington would be next. There are two out in the inning, however. Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey with you. Marker 0 4 8 on the year. Two and up. That'll bring Mike Rourke, the pitching coach, out of the dugout. And Tom Nieto goes to the mound as well. Two balls, no strikes. Mike Rourke, who used to be in the Braves system years ago, he was a catcher kind of a personal coach of Bruce Suter's. He got him out of retirement one year to straighten him out. Interesting how Suter spent the morning Monday here and yesterday in St. Louis. Fishing with Herzog. Fishing with Whitey. They are. Yeah, they're close. Not just manager player, but very close friends. Mutual admiration society. At the knees, two and one. short that should end the inning whoa he, he did throw it away lawless juggled the ball and indecision cost ozzy smith there he started to go to first then changed his mind at his legs sort of tangled up and threw it low and give benedict credit he doesn't run well but he kept hustling now the little flip a little low and it was bobbled should be an error on the shortstop, I would think. Surely that's what it will be. They have not put an error on the board. Oh, they're saying fielder's choice. Well, that's a ridiculous call. Oh, man, that's... Waddell hits the foul. He's singled and struck out. If that's a fielder's choice, an Aussie ought not make an error all year. Yeah, that's right. He's a great shortstop. He doesn't yeah. need the help. I mean, it wasn't a fast runner going to second, oh, Bruce Benedict. Three steps. That's a joke. And the National League should take note of that. 
called a strike. Two and one. Well, whether it's charged an error or not, it was a mistake by Ozzie Smith, and now Claudel will try to make him pay the bill for that. Cox wants him to start over with the set of signals. They switch, as you know, when a runner reaches second base. Sharply hit right field, base hit. They will hold the runner, and very wisely so. He'd have been out 20 feet. The bases are loaded for Rafael Ramirez. Pass like has a good arm, and he showed it. Of course, Bobby Wine isn't going to take a chance with an average runner. Benedict doesn't have the good speed, and they're down by three. So he quickly holds Benedict and watch this strike to the plate. All the way on the fly. Activity in the bullpen for St. Louis, Bill Campbell begins to heat up. There are two out in the inning. It's a 4-1 game. The bases are full of Braves. All this happened with two out. A walk of fielder's choice, which should have been an error, and a single. Watching the new stars come in, and he is a new and electrifying star. Ozzy Smith leads off of the Cardinals here in the bottom of the fifth. They have a 4-1 lead over the Braves. 4-5-0. and 1-4-1 oh. one, four and one for Atlanta. And here's Barker against the Wizard of Oz. Cuts and misses. Strike one. Ozzy singled to right on a hit and run. That chased Coleman to third base in the first inning. Both of them eventually scored. Ground out and a sack fly. Ozzie stole second, went to third on Benedict's throwing error, and scored on a sack fly from Jack Clark. The first two runs for the Cards. One and one. Boy, when Barker has been wild tonight, he has really missed the strike zone. Glenn has walked two, and they both have scored. Coleman in the first, and Andy Van Slyke last inning. 4 1 St. Louis in the bottom of the fifth. Curveball is popped down the right field line. It is trouble. Fair ball. It'll be a single. There's excellent fielding from Hubbard. Not just the throw, but angling out and getting the ball in the first hop on the line. Well, that would have been a double for Ozzie Smith. And Ozzie Smith was thinking double all the way here. As soon as he hit that little looper down the line, he took off for it first. And he was not slowing down when he rounded the bag at first. And watch how quickly Hubbard comes into the picture here and gets to that ball. Barehanded pickup. Smith applies the brakes. He was about a third of the way to second base. And he was sent scurrying back. He 
is, as I'm sure you know, a threat to steal. In fact, Ozzy on the year is seven out of seven. This Cardinal team going to drive catchers nuts. Whoop. Perry tried to shove Ozzy off the bag. Ozzy stayed on it. Here's Willie McGee. Cardinals, a very hot hitting team. Braves catching them at the wrong time. Pitch is taken for a strike by McGee. Willie grounded out. And got an RBI on the first. He has six ribbies in this free series. Then he singled, stole second, and went to third on Benedict's error. Benedict only has one throwing error. Ozzy Smith stole in the first inning, but he went to third on a ground ball, then scored on a fly ball. It's a rather unusual batting helmet Willie McGee wears. Fouled off. You mean that he has coverings on both sides? Yeah, most switch hitters have two different batting helmets, one with a flap where they bat left-handed covering their right ear, and then they have another helmet with a flap covering their left ear when they bat right-handed. But Willie takes care of that with one hat. <laughs> I guess he, he likes that hat. Doesn't affect his running, I'll tell you that, or his hitting. He's hitting 327. The 0-2. McGee stays alive by just making contact. McGee, another one of the Cardinal hitters on a hot streak. He's hit in 13 of his last 16, now 14 of his last 17, an average of over 370 for that time. Looks like he's got earmuffs on. <laughs> it really does. Oh, two is it on the ground. There is one. No chance at second at first base. McGee runs too well, and he grounds into a force play, 4-6. into only 23 double plays this year and one reason is they've got guys like McGee and Ozzie Smith and Vince Coleman well, they hit a ground ball a double play situation very often the result is just that a throw is not even made here's Jack Clark Jack Clark's all-time RBI high for one year was 103 with the Giants a couple of years ago he's going to better that if he stays healthy this year not only is he happy and healthy here in St. Louis, but he's going to have Vince Coleman, Ozzie Smith, Tommy Herr, or Willie McGee hitting in front of him. And they're on base, and boy, do they run. Pitches up high. Willie McGee is an obvious threat to go. He has stolen successfully 12 out of 14 times. The Cardinals have over 75% success in stealing bases. That's fantastic, especially as much as they run. Barker chases him back. Clark had a sack fly. Drove Murph back to the center field wall in the first inning for his long drive. McGee fakes going. The breaking ball is high. And the count 2-0. That breaking ball upstairs that Barker's had trouble controlling tonight has given him some trouble. Coleman's home run inside the park on a high breaking ball. There goes McGee. Cut on and missed the throw. Oh, the throw had him beaten and he's safe. The throw was there. That's a great throw by Benedict. But Willie McGee slid in safely. Let's see what happened down at second base. It was a perfect throw by Benedict. McGee is going to go to the center field side of the bag and try to elude the tag. And he just did sneak the foot in there. Comes off the bag there, but Hubbard doesn't see him until too late. He was off the bag there for a good long time, but Hub didn't notice it until McGee snuck his foot back in. Third stolen base for the Cardinals tonight. They had five last night. Curveball is right in there, and the count evens at two and two. And McGee is now 13 out of 15 on the base pass. McGee is second base with one out. And it'll be a 2 2 pitch coming up to Clark. Curveball just missed. Now, that was a pretty good curveball. He got that down and just. Missed the outside corner, but he counts gone full three and two. Left 
left-hand hitter Andy Van Slyke on deck. Here's the payoff. Curveball, strike three. Pretty pitch. Clark looking fastball. And he was mesmerized as the ball bent over. Now he just froze on this pitch. Breaking ball inside corner at the knees. Great location. That's the second strikeout for Barker. So two away, and here's Van Slyke, who has flied out and walked and scored a run. Ball is high ball one. Van Slyke is finally fulfilling the promise that the Cardinals have had for him. He's been up now a little more than a year and a half. He came up after Keaton Hernandez was traded to the Mets two seasons ago. It didn't hit well for a couple of years, but this year he's hitting 323. He's got some power too. Count evens one and one. Van Slyke with three home runs and 17 RBIs. And he's been successful eight out of ten times on the base pass. McGee at second base with two men out. The Cardinals lead at 4-1, bottom of the fifth. Way high. Well, two and one. Tomorrow we'll be on the air at 1.35 Eastern Time. Rick Mailer will pitch for the Braves. Takes his 8-2 mark out on the hill against rookie right-hander Kurt Kepshire. Glenn Hubbard will make the play. And for the Cardinals, no runs on a hit. They leave one at the end of five. It's 4-1 singles. Sixth inning in St. Louis. Cardinals lead at 4-1, and the Braves will have the middle of the order up. Harry Murphy and Horner. Gerald's over two. Danny Cox trying to protect a 4-1 lead. Chopped over the mound, and oh, what a play by Ozzie Smith. He doesn't get him. Perry legged it out. Ozzie Smith. What an acrobat. Well, he doesn't get him on this play, but how many times do you see a shortstop field a ball over on the second base side of short? He had to throw off the wrong foot, was unable to get anything on the throw, including accuracy. But the mere fact that he got to that ball was remarkable. He gets to every ball. I know the old-timers don't like it, but really there are people who do think, baseball people, think Ozzie Smith is the best fielding shortstop of all time. And when people bring up Huey Reese and Phil Rizzuto and Marty Marion. I don't know what Ozzie Smith can do. All right, here's Murph with a count of 1-0. Oh. That evens the count. Dale's over two. He struck out on a curveball his first time, then grounded to short. I know what Ozzie Smith can't do. And shortstop what? He can't wait to pick up his paycheck <laughs> twice a <laughs> month. <laughs> For the uninitiated, Ozzie just signed about, oh, a two mil a year job. I'd be glad to help him if he needs any help. The pitch. Again, grounded foul, one and two. I read a story in the St. Louis papers that the Ozzie Smiths are looking for a new home. And they are looking for the real McCoy. I don't suppose a realtor or two will get in touch. Curveball, which bent way outside. 
Murph went fishing. This is a pitch when Murphy is in a groove and hitting the ball well. He doesn't chase that particular pitch. When he's not hitting the ball particularly well, you'll see him go after pitches like that. And the more he does, the more he sees until he gets back in one of those grooves again. That's the fourth strikeout for Danny Cox. One away, and here is Bob Horner. Bob Horner really hit a prototypical Horner home run in the second inning. Perry off at first, and the fastball is low inside ball one. Horner with that marvelous swing, that short, sweet, compact swing, and he drove the ball about, oh, I would say 10 rows back into the seats in left field. That's some drive. The curveball missed 2-0. Oh. They asked Dutch rented, but Horner plainly had held up the swing. Braves are down 4-1 here in the sixth. Atlanta with five hits, the Cardinals with six. And the Braves need this fella to get going. Two and one on the foul ball. If Horner had not been hurt, well, if he hadn't been hurt, the Braves might have won a couple more pennants. But if he hadn't been hurt, there wouldn't be the consternation over Horner's slow start. But when he drives a ball like that, when he hits the ball, really the way he's been hitting it for a couple of weeks, he'll be all right. He's going to hit. Three and one as the pitch was inside and a bit high. Terry Harper's on deck. Braves are down 4-1. They have a runner at first base. Braves got a big break last inning when Lawless fumbled the throw from Ozzie Smith. It should have been an error. They didn't call it an error for some reason. And then a single could only advance Benedict to third, and Ramirez hit into a force play with the bases loaded. That's driven to deep left center field. High and far and way out of here. Another colossal shot for Horner. And that's Bob Horner. That's what the Braves need. You know, I know he's been saying it over and over. What a broken record we all are, but that's what the Braves have needed. Horner to hit that way in back of Murph. We've been saying it since Horner got hurt in 1983. What a shot. Got out of the ballpark in no time at all. It's 4-3. This has got to be one of the longest home runs ever hit here. That ball hit off the scoreboard beyond the seats in left center field. I wonder if anyone's ever done that in this ballpark before. It hit the lower left-hand corner of the scoreboard and then bounced down into the seats. Look at that. That's got to be one of the longest home runs ever hit here. Harper hits it in the air to short center. And it's going to dunk in for a base hit in front of McGee. That swing of Horner's should be frozen and presented as a clinic everywhere in this country or anywhere wherever baseball is played. Watch where this ball hits. Way up there, about maybe four Second feet up the scoreboard, uh, then bounces down into the seats. In truth, Pete, though, people watching at home cannot estimate, because they're not in the ballpark, how far that is or even how far his, his first home run was tonight. His first homer was pulled down the line and had to be 12 rows back. You've got to go over the wall, and then the seats are receded maybe 10 or 15 feet. And that ball struck, as you say, the the scoreboard in deep left center field. How now would you estimate that at what, 450? About? Oh, yeah, 450, and not down all the way. It's still coming down. That might have gone 500 feet had there been no seats back there. Hubbard takes it up high, more so than just this game. The Braves have Horner really swinging the stick. There's Gene Garber warming up again. If the Braves get down to Barker, they'll pinch it. The lefty, I believe it's Rick Horton, is in the Cardinal bullpen. Pitches up high. That is Rick Horton. The other lefty in the bullpen would be Ken Daly, and we know Kenneth, the ex-Brave. Mike Rock out to the mound. Well, the Braves have scored twice on Perry's base hit and Horner's mammoth home run. And he's at two of them tonight. You see the meeting on the mound with Nieto, Rourke, and Danny Cox. And the Braves have pulled to within 4-3 with a tying run at first base. And still only one man out here in the sixth. But more than anything else, psychologically, if you will, Bob Horner has been swinging the bat that, that good for a couple of weeks. And hitting in bad luck and now it seems he's finally shaking it pitch is up high and the count three and oh on hubby and another errant pitch will force the tying run to second base there you see horns 
Gerald Perry on his left, Claude Ellen his right, pitches in there at the knees, three and one. Well, Pete, we have been waiting a long time for that kind of Horner explosion. Maybe he'll get into one of those streaks. He's a very streaky hitter when it comes to the long ball. When he gets in one of his good grooves, he'll sometimes hit eight or nine in a week. Now the 3-1 to Hubby is inside ball four, and the Braves have the tying run at second and the go-ahead run at first. And that will be all for Danny Cox. Coming out of the dugout, Whitey Herzog, and he has no choice. He has to make the change, and there'll be a lefty, Rick Horton, coming in. By the way, if you've wondered why the crowd is making all the noise at odd times with nothing going on there, they're posting the Stanley Cup scores of the first Stanley Cup game, and we'll endeavor to get that score. Edmonton and Philadelphia are playing at the Spectrum in Philly tonight. Well, Rick Horton comes in from the Cardinal bullpen, and we'll get back right after this. comes out of the Cardinal bullpen, a left-hander. He has pitched pretty well for the Cardinals as you look at his stats. 13 Ks and five walks. Five walks and 16 innings. 11 hits and 16 innings. Good ratios, and here's Horton to go against Bruce Benedict. This inning began with a base hit from Perry on that grounder up the middle that Ozzie Smith made a nice play on, couldn't get him. And then after Murph struck out, Horner's second home run of the night. He's knocked in all three runs with his two home runs. That made it 4-3. Bob Porsche, a right-hander warming up in the Cardinal bullpen now. Then the base hit by Harper to right center and the walk to Hubbard. So the Braves have the tying run at second. And the go-ahead run at first here is Bruce. And the swerve is inside ball one. Two and oh, another breaking ball low and inside. Albert Hall has come on deck. He'll pinch it for Barker. Gino warming up in the Braves bullpen. Braves down 2 0 right at the get go tonight, and then later 4 1 before this inning. And again, low and inside. Horton trying to get the curveball inside on Benedict, and downstairs he's trying to get the ball. Bases loaded, one out. Harper at third. Hubbard at second. Benedict at first. And Albert Hall pinch hitting for Barker. The 0-2. Wasting it outside. One and two. There you see the aforementioned base runner. Albert Hall, tough to double up. He has very good speed. The 1-2. Pete, if Albert Hall not down playing his role as a 
brave. But you wonder if he wouldn't be a much better player on artificial turf with that kind of speed. Oh, I think he would be. He's right out of that same mold. Not quite the amount of speed that guys like Coleman and McGee have, but he's the kind of player that if he hits a ground ball, can beat it out if it's hit a little bit left or right of the second baseman or shortstop. The pitch. Breaking ball struck him out. A hall strikes out, and the Braves did not get the time on him. On an out, which they could have done. And now they need the base hit. And Albert Hall is not the kind of hitter who strikes out very often, so Horton got a tough strike out there. That's the first time he has struck out this year. Obviously, the first K for Horton, and the fifth by Cardinal Pitcher. Two way, here's Claudel. Horton was probably brought in to stop the Braves from pinch hitting Chambliss in this situation. And now he can go against the lefty and Claudel Washington. And there's a strike. You need left-handers, if only to go against a Claudel, or if only to stop pinch hitting a rusty Staub or a Chambliss. <laughs> That's foul, and Horton is way out ahead, 0-2. The Cardinals about ready to get out of another big jam. Braves left the bases loaded in the fifth. And here in the sixth, with one out, had a chance to get the tying run in on an out. Now it's going to take a base hit or Cardinal error. Four, three, St. Louis, top of the sixth, two outs, bases loaded, and an 0-2 count on Claudel. They wasted outside, trying to get Claudel to jump at an outside pitch, one and two. See if Horton goes to that big curveball. Fouled off. No, it was fastball. Down low and got a golf to foul. Vince Coleman's first major league home run and inside the park job. One of the highlights tonight for the Braves, the highlight, two enormous Bob Horner home runs. That is grounded foul. And the count holds one and two. About Coleman's home run. When was the last time you ever saw an inside the park home run without a play being made at the plate? <laughs> Pete was describing that on radio. As the ball hit off the wall, he looked down and saw Coleman pass second base, heading for third. Unbelievable. <laughs> that is a little scary. The pitch. Now, oh, two and two. Rafael Ramirez awaits on deck, but if Robbie gets a chance to bat, see Gene Garber getting set. He'll come on and pitch the bottom of the six. If Robbie gets up, the Braves will have at least tied this game. Top of the six, four, three Cardinals. Fouled off, and Claudel doing a good job protecting the plate. He hasn't had a good swing. Morton's pitches are pretty tough. Montreal beats Los Angeles tonight, 6-1. Bill Gullickson got the win, and Tim Wallach had a home run. Jeff Reardon had the save. The 2-2. Swung on, hit up the middle. Ozzy Smith will make the play. That ends the end. For the Braves, two runs on three hits. No errors, and again, three left on. And Braves close the gap at the end of five and a half. Four, three, Cardinals. Gino comes in after Len Barker goes to first five. Strikeouts and two walks in. 16. Gene got hurt early in this season by the home run. He gave up five of them. But as I said, it's pitched much better of late. And Garber holds a very important key to this game. He has to keep the Cardinals right there for the Braves to catch up. Hubbard handles the ground ball off the bat of Terry Pendleton, one away. Very quickly, 4-3. Pendleton had a single earlier. With one away, here's the second baseman, Tom Lawless. Lawless playing in place of the league's leading hitter, Tommy Hur, is out with a slight hamstring pull. He was taken out in about the fourth or fifth inning last night.
Gonzalez played with the Reds last year for a short time. Pitches outside. Pete Van Weer and John Sterling with you on Braves Television on the Super Station. Cardinals lead it 4-3 here in the bottom of the sixth. There's the strike. Went back to the press box to check with the Cardinals people as to how many home runs have been hit off the scoreboard here. And there have been a few. Guess who hit the first one? Where do you hear this? Well, I'll give you a... There's a bounce to the Horner. The throw across two away. Now, I'll just make a guess because... When you say things like that, it's always an unlikely guy. I would say Joaquin Anduar. No. no. The first series... Shut ever, up, John. <laughs> the first series ever played in this ballpark in 1966, in the middle of May, was between the Braves and the Cardinals, and the first home run ever hit off the scoreboard came in that series off the bat of Joe Torre. Ah, all right, all right. Had a long conversation with Bob Gibson about our mutual buddy. Two-way, no one on base. And here's the catcher, Tom Nieto, the eighth hitter in the lineup. Curveball and a whip. Torrey hit one off. I could have guessed George Hendrick. He has some deep home runs yeah, in this ballpark. I bet he probably has done that here. But I don't know. That's, that's a pretty good shot, that scoreboard. Out there. Braves have had two mammoth home runs recently. Horner hitting the scoreboard there. Terry Hopper practically knocking the teepee down the other night. And for the game winner against the Phillies. Nubbed off the ground, picked up by Perry. He feeds Garbert, 3-1, and that will do it for the Cardinals. 1-2-3 here in the sixth. At the end of six, it's 4-3 St. Louis. Rick Horton gets his Warm-up pitches here before the top of the seventh. The Cardinals have a 4-3 lead as we enter the final three innings, and the Braves will send up Rafael Ramirez, Gerald Perry, and Dale Murphy, and on deck, the Horns, who has clocked two tonight. 4-3 Cardinals as we hit the seventh, and here's Pete. Thank you, John. Ramirez tonight, one for three, had a single in the first inning. In the third, he grounded to third, and in the fifth, he hit into a 6-4 fourth play. Horton delivers a 5 ball one Great play by the pitcher, Ricky Horton. That ball was headed toward center field. But Horton stuck out the glove and won away. It might have been a lucky stab, but one thing Horton did was finish up in good position. He's really squared away and that wasn't lucky at all. Horton saw it and grabbed it. Jeff Lottie up now in the St. Louis bullpen. Here's Gerald Perry, who's one for three. He's flying to right, grounded to short, and had an infield single. And that's going to be a second base hit of the game, driven into right center field. So Perry aboard with one man out. Now Dale Murphy. Murphy 0 for 3, two strikeouts and a ground out tonight. Trying to extend a five-game hitting streak. Braves down by one. They've out hit St. Louis, 8-6. But where it counts, it's a 4-3 Cardinal lead. Horton with an excellent pickoff move. You really have to be wary of that move if you're a runner at first. says he swung. So it's nothing in one. Perry, a good base dealer. The problem here is that good move by Ricky Horton. He's not going to be able to get a big lead over there. not the real good move. One man out in the seventh. And the one strike pitch. Foul away on two. Horton 
and Ken Daly have been the two big pitchers in the Cardinal bullpen. Neil Allen having his problems, but cards have been picked up by the work of the two left-handers. Fouled off at the plate. Coming into this game, Horton had given up only one run in 16 and one-third innings. And Daly has given up only one run in 16 and two-thirds innings. That's pretty good relief pitching. Now the 0-2 to Murphy struck him out with a fastball. Horton records a second strikeout. And now Bob Horner. I think Murphy might have been looking. Well, there's Horner's last swing. We're going to see Murphy swinging at the fastball. Anyway, here's Horns with two up. Two home runs in the game tonight on a ground out to third. Horner now with three homers on the season. Ten RBIs. Had a good swing, but didn't get the breaking ball. been six years since any member of the Atlanta Braves has hit three homers in a game. Dale Murphy was the last to do that in May of 1979. The 0-1 on the way. Horner pops this one straight up in the air. Catcher Tom Nieto in foul territory will make the catch and end the inning. No runs, one hit, one left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Score remains, St. Louis 4, Atlanta 3. <laughs> Pitcher Ricky Horton will bat for himself to lead off the bottom half of the seventh. He's 0 for 2 on the season. He takes a pitch from Garber inside ball one. Horton, Coleman, and Smith do up in the bottom of the seventh. 4-3, St. Louis leads it. One the count. Tap to the left side. It'll be Bob Horner cutting in front of Ramirez, throwing on to first for out number one. First game in the Stanley Cup Finals is in the record book, and the Philadelphia Flyers beat the Edmonton Oilers 4-1. Coleman with a walk and inside the park home run and he hit into a 6-4 force play. He scored two runs, driven in one. He's wearing a helmet like Willie McGee wears. See if it has jet engines inside. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> Here's the 0-1. Caught the corner, nothing and two. You know, when you hear people like Mike Shannon and Bob Gibson, guys who played with Lou Brock throughout their career, saying that this guy's better than Brock, and he's only played in the major leagues a month. Imagine that. Imagine guys like Shannon and Gibson saying things like that. And they're buddies with Lou Brock, and they played with him and won championships with him. <laughs> Amazing, really, what a testimonial. Now the 0-2 from Garber. Did not get the changeup, and this time Coleman will run to the dugout. Coleman has not seen Gino's motion or that great change, and he is way out in front. And Gino pitching very well. So Garber's retired five in a row now. Here's Ozzie Smith. Who has singled twice and grounded out to second. See, he's a switch hitter. He does not wear the ear flaps on either ear. Nothing at one to count. Four runs, six hits, no errors for St. Louis. Three runs, eight hits, one error for Atlanta. We're in the bottom half of the seventh. That missed one and one. 
Kurt Kepshire against Rick Mailer tomorrow afternoon in the final game of this series. Braves are off on Thursday. Back home against the Pirates Friday night. A 1-1 from Garber. 2-1. the first five innings, allowed four runs, six hits, walked a couple, struck out two. Garber's been perfect through the first five hitters he's faced. Here's the 2-1. Slapped by Horner. Base hit left field. That's all a hitter like an Ozzie Smith has to do on the astroturf. Hit that ball in the ground. Try to guide it through one of the holes in the infield. goes with the pitch outside. Vince Coleman on the radio star of the game show last night said that he knows if he hits a ground ball and makes the shortstop go to either his left or right, he has a chance to beat it up. So another base stealing threat, Ozzie Smith aboard at first. Here's Willie McGee, who's one for three. Ozzie stole a base in the first inning and is now seven for seven in that category. Two men out of the inning. A little closer play, but Ozzie got back. Strike at the knees, nothing in one. McGee drove in his run when he grounded out in the first inning. He had an infield single in the third. Reached out a force play in the fifth. He was off the rubber. And he throws over again. delivery missed outside one and one McGee with six RBIs in this series he drove in five last night one in tonight's game the runner is going on the one one it's fouled away by McGee one and two a trade the New York Yankees made that I bet they wish they hadn't. McGee was a minor leaguer playing double-A ball. And he was traded over to the Cardinals for pitcher Bob Sykes. Garber again stepping off. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Bottom half of the seventh, St. Louis up by a run. Here's the one-two, the changeup, grounded, pass first. Base hit right field, Ozzie Smith heads for third. And the Cardinals have runners at the corners with two outs for Jack Clark. Hit number two off Garber, hit number eight in the game for St. Louis. McGee went out and got the breaking ball and pulled it between first and second. Ozzie Smith easily going to third. And here's Jack Clark again with men on base. He's going to see this happy situation for himself all year long with the McGees and the Hers and the Vince Coleman's and Ozzie Smith sitting ahead of him. Terry Forster up now in the Atlanta bullpen. McGee is chased back. 
McGee has two stolen bases in tonight's game. 13 on the air and 15 tries. Again, he throws over. Jack Clark with a sacrifice fly to center in the first inning. In the third, he grounded the third. And he struck out his other time. Nobody was covering at second base, and Bruce Benedict very alertly noticed that, and instead of throwing to the bag at second, threw right to the second baseman, Glenn Hubbard. That's the third stolen base of the game for McGee, and his 14th on the season. This is an alert play by Benedict. It really is, because instead of throwing to center field for a run, he changed direction, fired it midway between first and second to Hubbard. A mix-up between Hubbard and Ramirez over who was supposed to cover down there at second. Nobody did. And Benedict really had to think quick there to prevent a run from scoring. This is why you need a good hitter behind a good hitter. Andy Van Slyke, the left-hand hitter on deck, and he's been hitting very hot the last few weeks. Because if he wasn't, if he didn't have a good hitter, you'd just simply walk Jack Clark in this situation. They'll be careful with Clark, nonetheless, with runners second and third and two outs. Here's the 1-0 pitch, 2-0. First, they could walk him and bring in Forster to pitch to Van Slyke, which they might do. If they get to 3-0, you might see the intentional walk. Here's the 2-0 delivery. That's in for a strike, 2-1. Third is Ozzie Smith. Down at second, you see Willie McGee. Two men out. And the 2 1 delivery. Little chopper down that third baseline. Bob Horner will barehand it. It's a foul ball. It's a foul ball. Don't worry about it. Foul ball. Called by plate umpire Lee Wire. And Hal and Ear is going to argue. And here comes Whitey Herzog. two and two. The play was called by plate umpire Lee Wire. Well, we're going to see a replay after you see the argument. Let's see where Horner grabs the ball barehanded. The ball hits fair and Lee Wire ruled right away. The home plate umpire ruled right away that the ball was foul. Now they called the ball like that foul the other night the angle of the ball in the air. Horner, of course, couldn't take the chance on letting it come down. Wire made the call right away. You lip readers in the audience know that Whitey Herzog is telling Lee Wire that he missed the play. A few expletives deleted also in that assault. I don't blame Whitey Herzog for getting hot. That's a big run. Let's see again. I'll tell you, it's a tough call to make. The ball was going foul, but <laughs> let's say it was a close call. Leave it at that. So it'll be a 2-2 pitch up coming to Jack Clark. Garber delivers. Down the left field line. It's going to be foul. And by the way, that also was foul. twice picking up at least one more RBI he just missed picking up three more there the count remains two and two and Garber's 2-2 pitch fouled away still two and two I'll say some odd on that play you saw Bruce Bedford duck in behind Clark and pound the fist to make Clark think he was going to swing at an inside pitch. And then Benedict ducked outside, but where do you think the pitch went? There's Benedict. Now he goes back out, but the ball comes inside. It tails back into Clark. Still two and two on Jack Clark.
Gene Garber trying to hold it in a one-run St. Louis lead. And the 2-2 again. This one missed. It's full. 3-2. The on-deck hitter is Andy Van Slyke. There's the man who will bat if Jack Clark walks below the bases. There are your runners. Ozzie Smith at third. Willie McGee at second. you don't see very often. Usually, if an intentional walk is ordered after a hitter has been pitched to, it usually happens when the count is 3-0, and oh, maybe 3-1. and one. Very seldom do you see it on 3-2. and two. I don't think I've ever seen it before. I really can't ever recall seeing it. The reason is, if you get two strikes, you think of the pitcher. Whoever he is, whoever the hitter is, he has one chance. Of he might nip the corner for a third strike. Eddie Haas comes out, and that'll be all for Barber. So during the course of that at bat of Jack Clark against Gene Garber, Eddie Haas decided to intentionally walk Clark and bring in the left-hander Terry Forster to face the left-hand inning Andy Van Slyke. So Garber will be lifted after working an inning in two-thirds. He has given up two hits, one walk, and recorded one strikeout. Terry Forster coming on from the Braves' bullpen to face Andy Van Slyke, and while he warms up, we'll watch this. The new Atlanta pitcher Terry Forster is making his 13th relief appearance of the season. Good earned run average. And the rest of his numbers pretty good, too. He will not be facing Andy Van Slyke, the left hand hitter being lifted. And the league's leading hitter, Tommy Herr, who is a switch hitter and who is batting 431 as a right hand batter, will pinch hit with the bases loaded and two men out. did not start tonight's game. First time he's missed a start all season. He has a mild hamstring pull. It's not a very serious one, but they don't want to take a chance. Very much the same situation Bob Horner was in for the Braves earlier in the year. Overall, her at 372. No homers, 27 RBIs. He's more than halfway to his best RBI total ever in the major leagues. Right-hander Jeff Dedman up now in the Braves' bullpen. And a key spot in the ballgame. Cardinals up by one. They've loaded the bases with two outs, and Herr takes high and away ball one. There's Dedman.
American League Rookie of the Year. I led two leagues in chances at first. I played in three World Series. Who am I? Who am I? I'm Chris Chambliss. Veteran first baseman and slugger for the Atlanta Braves. They're aiming to shoot down the Cardinals. America's team battles St. Louis live at 135 p.m. Eastern on Superstation WTBS tomorrow. A look at the Redman scoreboard. The Reds beating the Cubbies at Wrigley Field. Pittsburgh getting a win. Bill Gullickson won for Montreal tonight. The second postponement in two days after the Major League win. Five or six hundred games without a rainout. You look at the American League scores. And there you have your Redman scoreboard. Well, the Braves with an uphill battle now. They were within one run. There's Jack Clark taking over in right field. And Mike Jorgensen takes over at first. Braves had it down to a one-run St. Louis lead. Now it's back up to a 6-3 Cardinal lead. And here's Terry Harper facing Ricky Horton and taking a strike. Harper is struck out, fouled a third, and singled. Off the end of the bat, 0-2. Jeff Dedman up in the Atlanta bullpen. The pitcher due up fourth in the inning. So if the Braves get a base runner, we'll see a pinch hitter. And there's the 0-2. Bouncing ball down that third base line. That's a fair ball. Let's see if Pendleton can throw him out. He can. Good play by Terry Pendleton. Well, that's one of the plays to decide if a guy can play third base. Pendleton pretty new at third base. Look how far away he is from the bag in foul territory against a guy who could run and he guns him out. He's got a third baseman's arm, Terry Pendleton. Hubbard has walked twice tonight and popped a second. That'll be foul. have had their problems on the road lately. They played very well on the road the first part of the season, but coming into this game, the Braves were looking at a road losing streak of five straight games. One ball, one strike on Hubbard. 6-3 St. Louis, top half of the eighth. Horton's 1-1 pitch. Fly ball down that left field line. It is going to be foul up into the seats. And it's 1-2. sixth inning before needing relief help. The Cardinals have the lead, so he can still win it. Third baseman Terry Pendleton again, this time in foul territory. Two down. Now Bruce Benedict, who has hit into a 4-6-3 double play, and he has walked twice. Braves guilty of leading the bases loaded twice in this game, once in the fifth, once in the sixth. Cardinals had a bases loaded two out situation in the bottom of the seventh. They got the big hit, a two run single by Tommy Hur. And this will be an easy one, two, three inning for Ricky Horton. Willie McGee for out number three. Bottom half of the eighth inning coming up. Score remains St. Louis six, Atlanta three.
Base hitter for the pitcher in the top of the order, Claudel Washington. That Rafael Ramirez do up. One ball, one strike on Wallace. is empty. The count nothing and one on Horton. That evens it one and one. And now the one one offering. Breaking ball in for a strike. Forster ahead in the count one and two. Still one and two. We'll be with you tomorrow afternoon at 1.35 Eastern Time for the final game of this series. Two and two now on Ricky Horton. Now the two two. That missed outside. Three and two. Vince Coleman waiting on deck. Foul back. There's one of the heroes for the Cardinals tonight, an inside the park home run. Back in the third. And here's the payoff pitch. He walked the pitcher. walk issued by Forster. Walk number four off Atlanta pitching in the game and now we'll see Vince Coleman batting from the right side. A walk and inside the park home run. A force play and a strikeout. One for three officially. Two runs scored. One RBI. Pitch on the way from Forster. Ground ball, deep short. Watch Coleman fly. They'll go to second, though, in time for the force. They well, wouldn't have gotten Coleman at first, but the inning's over nonetheless. No runs or hits. A walk, one left. Braves have one more chance as we go to the ninth inning. Atlanta down, six to three.
purchase a limited edition Dale Murphy MVP plaque with the Braves Clubhouse Collection catalog. To receive yours, send one dollar, your name, address, to Braves Catalog, P.O. Box 4064, Atlanta, Georgia 30302. You'll receive a coupon worth one dollar towards your first catalog order. Ninth inning, Brad Comments will pinch hit for Terry Forster against the left-hander Rick Horton. Comments batting 256. No homers, eight RBIs, 0 and 1 the count. Brad is 0 for 2 as a pinch hitter this year. And the 0-1 missed inside. Cardinal bullpen active in case trouble starts. A right-hander, Jeff Lotte, and a left-hander, Ken Daly. Working out there. Here's the 1-1. Breaking ball in for a strike, 1-2. and two. Horton trying for his first save of the year. He's worked primarily as a setup man until tonight. Two and two. Washington will follow, then Rafael Ramirez. Here's the 2-2. Struck him out with a breaking ball. Third strikeout for Rick Horton. And it was a breaking ball down and in on Brad Comets. He's two for four tonight, a couple of singles. His batting average has been in that 285, 295 area all season long. Little chopper toward short. The Wizard of Oz throws out Claudel for out number two. So it's all up to Rafael Ramirez. Watch how easy Ozzy Smith makes this play look. One of those high bounders he got to it before it hit the ground a second time throws out Washington by four steps Ramirez had a base hit in the first inning is only hit in four at bats and he takes high and away ball one Gerald Perry on deck one ball one strike coming. Line drive, base hit center field. So the Braves stay alive here. A two-out ninth inning single by Ramirez. Only the second hit off Horton. And it'll bring up Gerald Perry. The hits, as you see, even now, nine apiece, but the Braves have wasted a couple of chances to put some more runs on the board. They left the bases loaded in the fifth, did it again in the sixth left eight men on base all together. Perry tonight, two for four, two singles. The on-deck hitter is Dale Murphy. But there are two outs in the inning. And this should end the ball game. Lawless on the first for round number three, and the Cardinals have beaten the Braves for the second straight night. As Rick Horton saves it for Danny Cox. Your final score, St. Louis 6, Atlanta 3. We'll be back with the totals right after this. Well, the St. Louis Cardinals have made it two straight over the Braves. Six runs, nine hits, no errors. Seven left for St. Louis. Three runs, nine hits, one error. And nine men left for Atlanta. The winning pitcher is Danny Cox. He's now four and one on the season. Rick Horton gains his first save of the year with three and two-thirds innings of scoreless relief. The losing pitcher, Len Barker, his record goes to one and four. Vince Coleman, an inside the park home run to highlight the game for St. Louis. Bob Horner with two long home runs, driving in all three Atlanta runs. So the Braves now fall to 16 and 21, while St. Louis goes to 18. And 19. A reminder, we'll be back with you tomorrow, 1.35 Eastern time for the final game of this series. Kirk Kepshire goes against Rick Mailer. And we hope you'll tune in then. A sports doubleheader tomorrow on the Superstation. NBA playoff basketball, the Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics from the Boston Garden tomorrow night 
at 8.05. We'd like you to stay tuned now for a movie presentation, a good one, Seven Days in May, coming up next in the Superstation. Until tomorrow, for John Sterling, Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey, our director Tom Smith, and our entire TBS crew, Pete Van Weeren from St. Louis, where the final score was the Cardinals 6 and the Braves 3. So long, everyone.